Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating dynamic stacked objects in Cinema 4D and X particles. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get unlimited access to more than 22,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The courses are project based and teachers take you through all the steps in creating everything from motion graphics to photography. And when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got four CG Shortcuts courses on there now, covering a bunch of stuff we don't normally go into on YouTube, and we're releasing new courses all the time. So if you want to give Skillshare a try, there's a link below for a free two-month trial that'll give you access to the entire catalogue of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts. So you can test it out and see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. So we had quite a few people ask us how to create this effect by Marcel Pikarski, who originally created this artwork in Houdini. So we thought we'd have a crack at recreating something similar in Cinema 4D, with a little bit of help from X Particles. So make sure you check out Marcel's Instagram page for a load more cool animations like this, and we'll hop into Cinema 4D and see if we can create something similar. Okay, so I've already started with a simple cylinder that we can use for this effect, but you will notice I didn't use a primitive object. I've just got a circle inside an extrude object instead, and I've also added a little bit of bevel at the top here. And there's a few reasons why I've done it this way. If we hit N and B on the keyboard to show the lines, the geometry here is a little bit different than we get with the standard cylinder because over here in the caps, I've set this to Delaunay mode, which gives us these triangles. And low res triangulated meshes are actually very good for dynamic simulations. Plus doing it this way puts the anchor point right on the floor. So we can resize our cylinder nice and easy by tweaking the extrude later on if we need to. All right, so let's split our cylinder into pieces. And we're going to use the Voronoi Fracture object for that. And we'll also hold Alt when we click that to apply it to our hierarchy. And that has randomly fractured our cylinder, but I actually want to create nice, clean, straight slices across the Y axis. So let's go to the Sources tab of our Fracture object and remove the current source out of there. And we're going to replace this with some custom points from a matrix object. And I don't want those in a grid like that. Let's switch them to linear so that they're in line on the Y axis as well. And we'll also change the mode to endpoint and we'll bring these in a bit closer by reducing the gap in the Y axis. And I want the top of our matrix grid to end a little bit above our cylinder. Then we'll add a bunch more points. Let's try 15. And now that we've got these points, we don't need to see those in the viewport. So let's hide the matrix object and we'll drag that into our fracture as a new source. And now we have our slices across the cylinder in line with those matrix points. So we're almost ready to simulate this, but before we do, we just wanna make sure that none of these slices are touching each other. Otherwise they're going to explode all over the place when we add our dynamics. So under the object tab, we can offset the fragments. And we only need a tiny little offset just so they're not touching. So let's try 0.1. And I think that should work for us. Also, to make our stacks look a bit more interesting, I'm going to give these slices some random heights. So with our matrix still selected, let's come up here and add a random effector. And in the parameters, it's set to randomize the position of our matrix points by 50 centimeters, which is probably a bit too large for our scene to see any effect. So let's first zero out the X and Z axis randomization. And we only wanna randomize the points in that same Y axis. And we do have some random sizes now, but we only have four or five slices in our stack. So if we lower this value to maybe five, we get a load more slices again with some subtle variation like so. So now let's make our stack self-contained by grabbing our setup so far and hitting Alt and G on the keyboard to group all of that together into a null. And I also wanna put our null into a group as well. So we'll hit Alt and G again and if we pop that open, you can see our null is now inside there. And this is going to be our stack number one. So let's rename this at the top level and make sure we've got that selected. And I've set it up like this because I want to add a bevel deformer to the hierarchy and have it affect all of the slices individually. So let's hold shift when we bring that in to make it a child of our group. And we can even move that below here and that should still work. 
So down under the component mode, let's make sure we've set this to bevel the edges and we'll just decrease the offset amount again to something small like 0.1. And that bevel's looking a bit better, but we could probably do with some more subdivisions on there to smooth that bevel out a little bit. And we'll check that in the line mode. And I think that's looking good. So that's it for stack number one. Let's make this dynamic now and have it move around randomly on the floor. So we'll dig through here back to our Voronoi fracture and we're going to need a bit of help from X particles for this effect. So let's right click on this guy and under Insidium tags, which is the company that makes X particles, we'll use a bullet solver tag. And the one we want is the XP bullet rigid body tag. So let's apply that. And now we need a floor for our stack to interact with. And we're going to use a cube for that rather than a plane because 2D objects tend to go a bit crazy with dynamics sometimes but we will make that cube a little bit thinner and more floor-like and maybe a bit larger as well so our stacks have got enough room to move around. And we'll just take a peek below the floor. We definitely don't want any intersecting like this. So we'll also need to move our cube down in the y-axis one centimeter. And that's now sitting right on the floor. Okay, and so our floor knows to interact with our stack. Let's add another bullet tag. And this time we want an XP bullet collider tag. And now that that's all set up, let's hit play and see what we get. And we've definitely got some dynamics going on, but our stack just wiggles around and falls over. So let's rewind this and hit control D on the keyboard to pull up our project settings. And if we go over to the X particles tab and under bullet, here's where we can tweak our bullet solver settings for the scene. And you'll probably know by now, if you've seen a few of our tutorials, that increasing the max steps is going to give us a more accurate simulation. So let's double that to 10, which should hopefully get rid of some of that shakiness. And it still wants to fall over, but things are looking a little bit more stable now. So let's take a look at the tags themselves. On the fracture tag down under simulation, we've got some more dynamics controls here. So let's also reduce the bounce in our slices and the collision margin because those slices are very close together. Then we'll take a look at the tag on the floor and to make sure this is nice and slippery so our stack can slide around on top of it, let's get rid of the friction and increase the bounce. Then in collision, we'll change the collision shape to triangulated mesh, which tends to be the best method for this kind of thing. Then we'll play that back and see what we've got. And it's definitely starting to slide around on the floor a bit better. And the slices themselves are behaving quite nicely. But let's see if we can make that movement across the floor a little bit more random, like it is in the example render. So let's go back to the X particles menu. And we should be able to achieve this with a modifier. And we want a motion modifier. And we can just tear this menu off to get a good look at all the available modifiers. And we'll try the XP turbulence modifier. And let's see what that does. Not a whole lot actually. And I think that's because we need to link our modifier up to our bullet solver. So let's grab the tag on our stack here and under the modifiers tab, we can manually click and drag the modifiers we want to affect this directly into here, or we can have any modifiers we add to our scene affect this straight away by enabling include scene modifiers. So let's do that. And we'll see if that turbulence is affecting our stack now. And indeed it is, but it's probably a little bit too intense. We don't want our stack wandering off and falling over like that. So let's rewind this and we'll take a look at the settings in our turbulence modifier. If we take a look under the object tab, we've got a few different noise types to choose from here. And I think the curl option might be best for this because it gives us a nice smooth curling kind of turbulence. And I also don't want this to be too intense. So let's drop the scale down as well while we're here and see what that gives us. And the animation looks good, but I don't like how it's exploding straight away like that. And I think we can fix that back here again. At the moment, the turbulence is affecting the object on every axis. But if we disable it on the Y axis, that should stop applying any force upward or downward on our stack and only across the X and Z axis. So let's see if that helps. Maybe slightly better, but our stack is still falling apart pretty quickly there. So let's rewind that again. And we need a way to stick all of those slices together so they keep their shape a bit better rather than collapsing all over the floor. 
And the good news is we can do exactly that with constraints in X particles. So back in the X particles menu again, this time under dynamics, where we're using the bullet solver, let's bring in an XP bullet constraint. And I'm going to move that into our stack setup here and take a look at its settings. Firstly, we'll need to make sure that this is affecting our stack. So we'll drag the fracture object into here. And if we click on that, we can choose the kind of constraint to use on this. So under type, we need something that will stick those slices together a bit more tightly. So the sticky constraint seems the obvious choice. And now we need to set the way in which the pieces stick together. In this case, all of the slices are part of a single fracture object. So we need to stick the parts to self. And if we decide we need to fine tune our constraint, we can uncheck fixed constraint and that'll give us a load of different settings we can play with to get the stickiness exactly right. But we'll leave these set to the defaults for now and we'll see how our simulation's looking. Interesting. Let's just play that again. You can see how that constraint is sticking these pieces together, which is represented by this connection line here. But as it plays out, it goes a bit nuts at the end. And again, I think we can blame the turbulence for that. At the moment, it's applying the turbulence force to the whole stack, but we only really want this to be applied to the base of our stack because we only want the turbulence to move that base around on the floor. So let's go in here and see if we can limit the turbulence to the base only in the fields tab. And let's use a box field and we can adjust the fall off of that field by enlarging this box in the middle. Then we'll just make the outer box encompass our whole scene. And then we just wanna limit this to the area around the base of our stack. And now the turbulence is only going to affect the part of our stack that's within this box field. So let's see what happens. There we go. We've now got a nice fluid motion and our stack is finally staying together. So all we need to do now is add a few more stacks to our scene so they've got something to bump into. So let's just rename this cube to floor so we don't get confused later on. And we'll hold control on the keyboard and drag out a copy of our stack up here. And we'll name that stack number two. And we'll just move that guy over here. And I wanna randomize the height and slices in this stack to make things look a bit more interesting. So first, back in the extrude, let's go over to object and make this stack a little bit smaller by reducing the offset. Then to randomize the slices, we'll go to the random effector in this stack setup. And under effector, let's just try a different random seed value. And something like that will do. Then I'll just quickly duplicate that and do the same thing again. And we'll make this stack a bit bigger this time. And we might even decrease the amount of slices by reducing the matrix points. And we'll randomize those slices as well. And we'll just do the same thing again and I'll quickly make two more stacks. And feel free to make as many stacks as you like. Okay, so let's play that back and see how it all looks. And it's not looking too bad, but some of those stacks are bopping around a bit too much for my liking. So we could always come back to our turbulence and reduce the strength or scale to limit some of that motion. Or to increase the accuracy of our simulation, we can hit Control D on the keyboard and bring up our X particles dynamic settings again and try increasing the max steps or even decreasing the gravity. And in theory, that should get rid of any weird jittering. So let's try cranking this up to 24 and see if that fixes things. And indeed, that's definitely smoothed things out. So that's about it for this tutorial. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time, or head over to our website where you can download all of our project files and loads of other CG assets and resources. Big thanks to this month's patrons and CG insiders. You guys are the best, and there's no way we can make all of these tutorials without your support. Cheers, guys. Okay, that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.